Now in this course, we're learning how to evaluate arguments, and we said it's a two the evaluation, the analysis of arguments is a two-step process. The first one is reconstructing the argument. And the reason we said that is when we take an argument in, let's say, paragraph format, or the way you'd find it written, like our first example, the order of premises and conclusions not clear. Sometimes parts are found in various places along with reasons. There are other factors. Sometimes rhetoric comes in. Sometimes people are trying to give examples. Not everything that's being written is being written as an argument. So let's take a look at this and what we want to come up with is a single way of reconstructing an argument. And we're going to call what we're doing is putting the argument or the arguments in standard form. So that's going to always be the first step. And when we look at something like this, our at an argument like this, the first question we should be asking ourselves in trying to put the argument into a standard form is what is the conclusion? Remember the conclusion is the statement that's kind of the point of the argument, the thing that's going to be justified. Well, stop the in a, in a second. Stop the recording and see if you can figure out what the conclusion of this argument is. Well, you've obviously thought about it for a second since you've started the YouTube, the video up again. What did you guys have as the conclusion? Because I want to suggest it's Socrates is mortal. That's what we're trying to get at. Now that we've done that, I mean, some people might have thought something else, but usually kind of the fact that there's a therefore there indicates that what's following the therefore is the conclusion. So now we know what the conclusion is. The next thing we're concerned with is figuring out what are the premises. Maybe sometimes there's only one premise. But these are going to be two key questions that we have. What's the conclusion? What are the premises? So what do you guys think the premises are? Why don't you stop it and write down what you think the premises are? Now that you've spent a second doing that, I want to suggest that there are two premises here. One of the premises is just the first half of that compound statement. That is, Socrates is a man. And the second premise, or another premise, is all men are mortal. Now, as I said, we're going to be determining, or we're going to decide on a standard form. And what I want to suggest is the following format. Our standard form is going to look like this. First, we're going to put the premises first right because those are the reasons those are the assumptions that are being made that are supposed to lead to the conclusion and thereafter we're going to actually put the conclusion so what we we're going to end up is something that looks like this and just allow me to move things around a little bit all men are mortal is a premise socrates is a man the line under it being therefore and now the conclusion, Socrates is moral. So number one is a premise, number two is a premise, and those two premises are supposed to justify, lead you to the logical conclusion that Socrates is mortal. Okay, and we're going to do this for our other examples also. So, so far, if we undo, I hope you're getting, getting the picture, you found it a little confusing, why don't you just take a look at this particular segment. Uh, of our entire lesson and then once you have this down pat let's pick up because we're going to pick up with the next one next example